Hi, I'm Drex. For the past three months, we've explored the floor arts in a myriad of different ways, from its history, to the culture surrounding it, and the different ways that people participate in it. I hope you've learned something in this series. It's been a lot of fun to write and produce. There's a lot of open and unanswered questions, but the biggest one I'm interested in is this. If we know where we're at and where we've come from, where ultimately are we going? Ten years ago, the word flow arts didn't even exist, and now it's a term and a philosophy that underpins the work of thousands of artists all across the globe. We've seen flow artists perform in stage shows on America's Got Talent and become a bigger business. And through it all, there's no one that can deny the fundamental joy of spinning with your closest friends. We've seen some major advancements in the technology behind the different tools that we use, as well as how we interact with them. A majority of practice and fire tools for the past decade have been constructed out of materials originally meant for different industries or purposes. But but companies like Flowtoys and Lanternsmith had begun to develop materials and props designed specifically for flow artists. It might not be that far off in the future when materials designed for our art find uses in other industries. Many people have seen or used computer simulations of different tools either as a learning tool or to appreciate as art. Google recently developed a 3D painting application within the virtual world. An attempt to apply the same technology to the flow arts world has already begun and promises to bring our art into a new and visually stunning context. Mobile apps and geotagged resources are making it easier than ever to connect with other artists. The flow map of the world will soon be released, and in the meantime, there's a spin jam map on the Flow Arts Institute website. Want to find other artists? It's never been easier to do so. As we continue to research the health benefits of the flow arts and other similar movement arts, we may come to find that they work as an effective form of therapy for many physical and mental ailments. There's already promising research that shows that dance and tai chi are effective interventions for many of the physical ailments that encroach with old age. Spinning may soon join them as effective pastimes both for the young as well as for the old. Flow arts may also come to be an effective physical and social development agent for children or adolescents. They offer a great deal of fulfillment both as a meditation as well as a skill, and may be a great way to teach discipline and motivation to young minds. What heights could a generation of spinners who've been trained from childhood push the art to? Who knows? As the population of flow artists continues to swell, might we see an uptick in depictions of it in the mass media? Fire dancing was featured prominently in an episode of the TV series Grimm and has appeared in the background of countless music videos, TV shows, movies, and more. Who knows? In time, flow arts might become as widespread as skateboarding or yoga. Juggling and Diablo already have large-scale professional competitions. Might we see flow arts become more of a sport with a well-developed system of sponsorships, rewards, and friendly competition? I've heard more than a few observers compare flow arts to the early years of both the skateboarding as well as snowboarding scenes. Could flow arts be a vehicle for bringing the philosophy of flow and mindfulness to a greater audience? Many people have flocked to the spinning arts as an alternative to the hyper-competitive world of mainstream culture and commerce. As the ranks of flow artists continue to swell, might they, in some respects, bring the mental and physical discipline of flow to a wider audience in the same way that yoga has for mindfulness and movement meditation? One thing I can tell you for sure, the flow arts have had a massive positive impact on my life, allowing me to find creativity and movement, introducing me to an extraordinarily welcoming subculture and friends, as well as opening my mind up to pursuits that I previously thought were unimaginable. I hope you've enjoyed this journey through the flow arts world, and don't worry. There's plenty more to come. If you've enjoyed this or any other video in this series, please subscribe to catch the next one. Thank you all so much for watching and for supporting my channel through this experiment. And of course, enjoy the flow. Peace. Hey gang, so now we have reached the conclusion of this amazing journey of a series, and uh, I could not have done it were it not for my wonderful supporters on Patreon. Uh, Patreon is a crowdfunding service for content creators like myself on YouTube or that make comics or what have you that allows people that love the work that we do to sign up to support them with a regular monthly donation. You can sign up for as little as a dollar a month, and doing so allows me to make more series like this that investigate a variety of really ambitious topics within the flow arts world. So please help me make these videos keep on coming by going to patreon.com slash drexfactorpoi and signing up to be a supporter. If you're already one of my supporters on Patreon, thank you so much. You made this video possible. You made this entire series possible. And I could not be more appreciative. Thank you.